Every gun in history has required careful maintenance. Troops were told the M16 was the exception. It was self-cleaning. If you're like me, you heard about them telling the soldiers in the Vietnam War that their rifle was self-cleaning <clears throat> and they didn't need to touch it. If you were also like me, you're like, the hell are you talking about? Any machine, any machine at all with moving parts doesn't necessarily require a lubricant, but if you don't put a lubricant on it, you're going to cause premature wear. The machine's going to break down quicker. So why exactly would they tell the soldiers that it's self-cleaning? Recently, I had come up with a theory, and I'm pretty sure I figured this out. A viewer had actually pointed it out to me, and I'm like, mind blow. That actually totally makes sense, because I came up with my pressure wave theory, and he's like, that's probably why they said that to the soldiers in Vietnam. So basically... What's going to happen here is gas will come out of the barrel port, go down the gas tube, and push on the bolt carrier. The bolt carrier is going to come to the rear. There are two ports right here as soon as it, because this is piston operated, but the piston's inside the bolt. As soon as the gas rings break, right about Right there, these two ports will blow everything out of the dust cover, preventing more stuff from going into the rifle. Okay, great. So what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Well, also, right there, your gas tube will break from your bolt carrier. Just like when you see the percussion coming out of a muzzle, you'll see a wave travel. The same thing is gonna happen inside of your receiver. So it breaks right there, you got a pressure wave that goes down, a pressure wave that goes rear, a pressure wave that goes here, and a pressure wave that goes through the magazine. So if you can get the rifle to run, it's going to start cleaning itself. Because that pressure wave will go through there and it'll slowly work the crap out of the gun. This really became apparent when in-range TV put a normal AR-15 up against the HK-416. The normal AR-15 had no problems whatsoever handling the mud test, but then when they did a HK416, which is external piston operated, now all of a sudden it can only fire a couple of rounds. I guess the real question is, did we go in the wrong direction? Because what we did was made a whole bunch of external piston operated AR15s thinking that somehow it would make it more reliable. Maybe we should have made a bunch of internal piston operated AK47s to see if we could increase their reliability. Yeah. I'm actually really curious about this. If somebody can make an internal piston operated AK-47, will it be as reliable as the AR-15? Why? What's different? The rifles are exactly the same. They got the same kind of barrel, same kind of receiver. Everything is exactly the same except for one thing. There isn't the gas going into the receiver. Now I know at one point in time, the standard school of thought is you don't want to shit where you eat. Because that carbon will build up. Yes, carbon can take down a firearm, but it takes a lot. They've ran AR-15s 5,000 rounds without cleaning them, and they still just keep chugging along. Plus, what is carbon? It's graphite, which is a lubricant. So the carbon isn't bad being in the action. Well, because it was lacking that gas in the action, it wasn't cleaning itself. And I think that's ultimately what they came to the conclusion of and told the soldiers in Vietnam. Because they probably tested the AK against snow, mud, Basically anything that will hold its shape for a small period of time in your hand, the AK will fail miserably at. Now it passes the dirty water test without a problem, but water, dirty water is not mud. Totally different side of the spectrum. Because with water, there's a big enough hole around the trigger, and then there's a drain hole in the magazine. Right here, you're probably asking why is it not in the bottom like the AR-15? Well, it's because this magazine has so much curve. So water, yeah, it would float up to right there, but it would drain out enough to keep the firearm running. So if it's just muddy water or dirty water, yes, the AK-47 handles that without a problem. Use something that can actually hold its shape, like actual mud or snow or something like that, and it can't. The reason it can't is because it doesn't have a way to clean itself out. We'll start with the magazine first. So as you notice on the AR-15 magazine, there's a whole bunch of space around the lifter. So something that can hold its shape, like snow or water, can pass by the lifter. You'll also notice that the drain hole is right there in the bottom. So when the pressure wave would come through here, it would start cleaning the ammunition off, 
pushing it underneath the lifter. Ultimately, it would plug this little hole right there, but it doesn't matter because it's a pressure wave, so it'll start shooting the crap out the bottom, and it would ultimately clean itself out. The AK-47 is completely sealed up around the lifter. I'll try to roll on a pitcher. Yeah, water could get by this lifter, but something consistent, like mud or snow or something like that, is not going to be able to get by the lifter. As a matter of fact, after I did my snow test, I broke everything down and cleaned it, the AK mag had snow in it. The AR-15 magazine did not. And now let's talk about the drain hole. This is just a hole and it's not at the bottom. So if it were to clear this out, it would just be an empty space. There wouldn't be more stuff packing on top of it to push out that hole. But that's saying it can get by the lifter in the first place. Which anything that's still considered semi-solid is not going to be able to get by this lifter because there's just no clearance from the lifter in the magazine. Yes, there is clearance around the ammunition, but that doesn't change the fact that it's not going to clear the lifter. So the lifter is going to scrape that stuff up and just push it into the action. When snow gets inside here, it just brings it to the rear and packs it to the rear. Packs it around the recoil spring and it packs it in the trigger mechanism. Both places, well I should say all three places, your ammunition you want clean, your recoil spring you want clean, and you definitely want your fire control group clean. This does the exact opposite. Yes, if it didn't have a dust cover on it, when you'd shoot it, it would smash it against the rear and it would spray this way, spray this way, spray this way, and spray this way. So it would be a hell, hell of a lot more reliable, but with the dust cover on, it can't spray out. There's no way to exit and clean itself out. So I believe in Vietnam when they were talking about a self-cleaning rifle, that's what they were referring to as the pressure wave and how the rifle is set up and can clean itself out really well. Because as the pressure wave goes through the AR-15, that little bit of gap in the receiver is going to start pushing crap out. The hole around the trigger is going to start pushing shit down. Right here on the charging handle, it's going to push shit out that way. And then it's going to pressurize your magazine, pushing things out the bottom. And I believe that's why the AR-15 is so much more reliable than the AK when you actually get to a substance that can semi-hold its shape. Because it can push it out. The AK-47 cannot. It just keeps packing it in the rear until you hit an amount that starts causing failures. It also packs it down in the magazine. Because anything that got through there, like say something's coming in the dust cover, it's going to go forward. Well, it doesn't have any choice but to go down or out like this. Because the dust cover sits like that, yeah, you're going to have some stuff that exits out here, but a lot of it's going to go right inside your magazine. So I believe that's what they were talking about, was the positive pressure wave that flows through the AR-15 magazine and receiver that self-cleans it. If you ever want to test this, just put a whole bunch of oil inside your AR-15 magazine. And when you shoot, you're going to feel like an 18-year-old girl that answered a sketchy Craigslist ad, ad and went to Florida for a high-paying job. Not pretty at all. You're going to wear everything on your face. Now the AK, it just keeps getting packed in the rear. Packed in the rear over and over and over and over until it fails. So I believe that's what they were referring to, but then they forgot to put in the disclaimer, regular maintenance is still required because you still want oil in there. Even an AK without oil, yeah, it might run for a little bit, but it's going to cause premature premature rail wear, and it's going to cause problems. Everything wears so much quicker without oil. Yeah, maybe showing off in a YouTube video, it's a good idea not to run oil to show how well it can do, <laughs> but not in a YouTube video? Bad idea. If you were actually counting your life on this, you would be stupid not to keep it clean in oil. Why would you not? That makes no sense. And then you also got the problem... is your bolt has fluting on it. Now the idea is, is so material can get by it. However, it's also going to let material in. So your bolt will come to the rear lock. Well, now your fluting sticking out the back. It's going to grab some of that crap that it picked up from being packed in the rear so much, and it's going to push it inside of your bolt carrier. And it'll ultimately take this down. I believe that's why I was having issues with my snow test, 
with it not wanting to go into battery because it ultimately packed my bolt carrier full of snow. Again, the AK does fine against dirty water, but you have something that'll hold its shape and now all of a sudden it fails miserably. It's been tested multiple times. This is a fact. So is this the real reason why they told them they didn't need to clean their M16s in Vietnam? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, I wasn't there, I didn't give that order. What I do know is not cleaning your M16 would probably be fine if you were to fall in the mud, but it still requires regular maintenance. You still need to clean things off when you get a chance. You still need to oil it up. Like it or not, yeah, the receivers are made out of aluminum and the rest is made out of plastic, but your barrel and your bolt carrier is still made out of steel. Out of steel. And that does oxidize. Yeah, when they went to a fully chrome carrier, that's a little bit different story. These don't oxidize as fast, but they will still most definitely oxidize. Oxidized materials don't slide very well across other materials. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support my channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't buy what that particular link is for, just clicking on it and doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, and a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.